What's up guys and gals? I regret to inform you that the unfortunate has happened and we have gone to peace, I guess. It's great for our people. Being at peace is absolutely fantastic for the peasantry, but for those of us who make our livings, annihilating our foes, it appears as though we have nothing to do in this episode, so normally what I would do right now is just ride around in circles until a war gets declared. However, I figured I'd bring you along with me so that we could do some random clerical work, maybe get our accounts all settled in other places, and hopefully take a look at where our reputation is at with every faction and figure out whether or not we can start pitching the tent. Pitching the initial lovely tent of our own kingdom. Now though, let's go to our reports menu here. Our honor rating is 26. Our porty morale is looking okay. I said porty morale, which is more the morale around a port, if you were ever wondering. Now then, we have our character report. We have our right to rule at 54, which means we could make a pretty good rush at becoming a lord. However, we need to have friends before we do that. So from now on, I think we're going to make like E.T. and just be like, friend, and just make friends with as many people as we possibly can. I have a glowing finger, but I don't necessarily think that's going to help me make friends. I think it's just because I, like, poked a radioactive rhinoceros once. In any case, I think those guys are all under arms. And I was going to make a joke about how they were probably waving their hands around in the air like they just don't care, you know, under arms. But anyways, I decided to let it go, but at the same time reference it slightly, so it's like I made the joke, but then I didn't make the joke. Just in case you were wondering. In our notes, we have no missions left to do. Let's take a look at our faction rating. Ooh, it cleared us all out. So all of that evil shit that we did to Swadia before they declared war on us, it's been wiped out. It doesn't count anymore. I think what we'll do then is let's go get our accounts in order. I'm going to look at my weekly budget report. And we're going to start... Nara, Durkuba... Yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to head down to the south. And I think we're going to meet up with our friends down here in the dunes and see if we can't get ourselves some businesses built up. I think we had a problem down there the last time we tried to do it, unless it was in Rodox. Maybe it was Rodox that wasn't happy with us. Let's take a walk around the streets here and see if we can't make friends with the Guildmaster. I know I tried this last episode, but it's been about two weeks of in-game time. So we might get away with it. You never know. Okay, so we can make a profitable enterprise. Tools would make 346 dinars a week. That's not bad because it's reasonably cheap. We'd make it back in about... Oh, 20 weeks it looks like, which seems like a long time, but we occupy a lot of time doing nothing in this game. So let's take a look at the silken dye. 465. Let's have a little bit of a look at oil, possibly. It's going to be 86. Okay, that's not going to make us too much cash, and we're looking for the most bang for our buck right now, and I think the tools are going to be the best. We're only getting a 100%, I'm sorry, we're only getting a 100 dinar increase from velvet, silk, and dye, but it's costing us almost 200 to 300% to build it. So I'm going to go with tools on this one. And there's the money for the land. We'll get that built before we go any further. Now that we've got Ook's Call taken care of, what else do I have down here in this area? I don't honestly remember. It's been a while since our last episode, so you'll bear with me as I figure out where I have profitable enterprises and where I don't. Now then, we have Yalen, but we haven't done anything at Jail Kala. I think that's because the Lord of Jail Kala was not happy with us. Let's see if we can solve that in this episode, too. We're going to do some interesting stuff here. On other news, right before the war ended, while I was riding around looking for that ransom broker, Ambien got raided, so unfortunately our finances have been reset over there. Humdrum, ho-hum, absolutely a terrible turn of events, especially for the people of Ambien. I mean, I just lose money, they probably lost their scalps, but in any case, bad things have been happening to them, so we're gonna bear with it. Let's go around the streets here. And you gotta be careful, we are on the streets here. We are down on the streets, and it gets ugly in whatever city we're in right now. We're in some city, and I can't remember which one. I wasn't paying attention as I was riding around. That's the big problem that I was trying to explain to people about LPing, is that, like, imagine for just a moment, imagine for a second you're watching a movie and there's somebody talking to you, and it's like an engaging conversation, and you have to talk to that person while the movie is going. Like, it's not a conversation that you can be like, eh, piss off, and just tell them to go do something else. Like, you have to have this conversation. It's one of those we-need-to-talk type conversations when your girlfriend drops it on you. But in any case... You're stuck in this conversation. Now, 30 minutes into the conversation, tell me the plot of the movie you've never seen before. That would be the perfect way for me to describe El Pain to you. So if I miss little things here and there... Okay, so yeah, they don't like us. King Yeraglek isn't enjoying our company. So let's find King Yeraglek And see if maybe we can bribe him or get ourselves squared away with him. Where is Yeraglek? Is he in the castle? King Yeraglek is not in the castle. He's not around. He's got to be out and about then. There he is. So I don't know how much he dislikes us right now, so I'm going to save just in case he tries to jump me.
Ah, he wants us to handle a group of sea raiders. He's only at minus three, so that's something that I think we can take care of. Now, the sea raiders, that's kind of a weird quest, because we're in Voluka at the moment. I can only guess that it's that one right there up by Rivacheg, so let's ride on up that way. We're going to pick up some supplies while we're headed out in that direction anyways, so we'll get them from Deerum maybe. Deerum seems to have a pretty good supply of varied foods, and so I'm going to go with whatever they tell me to do right now. Oh, I guess not. As I say that, they've decided to give me the big ol' middle finger. And so, we've got just bread on board. I suppose I can pick up some grain right now, and we'll fill in everything else with whatever we can grab on our way up to the north. Now then, we'll hit Ray Vaden too, I think. Yeah, let's hit Ray Vaden. Ray Vaden's like, don't hit me! That's not okay! Only bread there too. It appears as though we're gonna have a serious case of scurvy fairly shortly, or at least a case of a massive iron deficiency if we can't find any meat or anything before we go any further. There's some fish. I don't want your bread. Give me your fish. Give me all your fish. You have no choice, fisherman. Put it in my sack right now. I demand it. And then what we'll do from there... I should probably be training troops right now, too, now that I'm thinking about it. We are in between campaigns, so it might be a good idea... Yeah, let's go to Caravan Guard with him. We'll go up to a Vagir Marksman. Might be a smart idea to drop off some of these guys and pick up some other archers while we're around. Like a couple of these guys out here from Mazen. Oh, they don't like me at all. I must have raided them at some point. I don't even remember all the terrible things I've done at this point. We have been so evil and so vile that really there is no... Santa's list has gotten kind of full. I'll leave it there and just say that not only do we have coal coming, but Santa's probably going to kick us squarely in the nuts when he arrives, no matter how many cookies we leave him, so... Let's jump on in and get rid of some of these sea raiders first and foremost. Our reports are saying that our morale is looking okay. I'm going to fight this big group of 60-something raiders. And once we get done on this field of combat, after we have drunk from their skulls, I think we'll be in a good... How many times have I said that during the course of this series? I have to have said that a lot. I'm going to leave archers right there. Infantry, we'll put you right there and tell them to stand a little bit closer. What are you doing? Follow me. I see you over there, sir, shaking that horse. So please stop shaking your horse and bring it back. Horses are like babies if you shake them too much. They have the tendency to do things like stop breathing, which then really leaves your freedom status very, very tentative with regards to the law. Big group coming in from right there, but they've sort of broken off from the remainder. We're going to go ahead and we're not going to let them skirmish. Or no, infantry... No, that's not what I want. Infantry charge! There we go. I need to give them the proper order. My fingers aren't functioning quite as I would like them to. It's cold in my house right now. It's real cold, and I know I can't complain to those of you who are, like, in Sweden and stuff right now. Or really just about anywhere other than California, because we tend to get the long end of the stick. Like, most people complain about the short end of the stick, but we get the long end of the stick when it comes to good weather. Although, I was telling you guys a few episodes about how we have, like, a serious drought, as in we're gonna have to import water from other places. And luckily, what's happened now is they're saying that in the next couple weeks, we may get, like, six or seven inches of rain, which will completely and totally reverse the trend, or at least give us enough to get through to the next year and hope that the next year ends the drought. Like, basically, we'll still have a drought, but it's not a real drought. It's a fake drought. It's a drought that's just like, yo, don't use too much water, man. We saw that 30-minute shower you took. But this year, they were talking about having to do water rationing, which is kind of an interesting thing. I think that's only happened once or twice with, like, rolling blackouts to the water system since I was a kid. Then again, California problems. We export a lot of water from what I understand too, so it leaves us in a weird situation where when we need extra, we're just kind of hosed. Like, I think we trade water to Arizona for electricity, and I think we do the same thing with Nevada for electricity. But other than that, I don't really know. I have no idea how they organize any of this stuff. It's so far beyond me that I just kind of talk out of my ass with respects to it. Which is really kind of code for saying that I should shut the hell up. But in any case, it's good news for us because our fields will not go fallow. Considering how much food we supply to the rest of like the United States, it's kind of a scary thing when we have droughts because then prices just skyrocket. One of those crazy economic things. We got another Huskar right there. Now I'm gonna put the Huskarls up at the top of the list because I don't want to bring a bunch of these guys with me who can't hold down a fight. Let's go ahead and go to the sea and they're all looking at me kind of sideways out the corner of the bar now. I understand. It's okay though, but you guys just aren't Huskarls. And it looks like we've gotten ourselves five Huskarls and Nizar, which is going to be a team that I can definitely work with. And if I can't work with them, I can at least slack a little bit and they can do all the work. Depends how many people are on my left over here, but I'm going to put... It looks like somebody has jumped into two-hander mode. 
You guys had told me to get new armor in the next episode, and I wasn't really sure why. I suppose I should ask for an explanation at this point and be like, why get something other than banded mail? Given my knowledge that I currently have, from what I understand, banded mail is really good. Like, obviously there's other stuff out there that's better, but it would cost us so much money that I don't really want to bankrupt myself in the course of, like, getting a bunch of other profitable enterprises set up. Nobody spawned behind us, so we should be alright, and so now I'm in that terrible position of being the point man. The point man is just that guy who has balls of steel, but nonetheless is probably going to have his name written on a stone wall somewhere by the end of this whole conflict. We'll run with it right now, and I'm not going to complain too much, but being on point is a scary, scary thing. Try and put me on point, I'm like, mm -mm, I'm going to be hiding in some bushes. Forget you. I'm going to be doing some crazy gorilla action. I'm going to be getting in there. Where are the female gorillas at? Now then... God, I've been using now then as like a segue for all my sentences lately, and I figure if I don't point it out, oh see we lost a Huskarl to a Sea Raider, at least he's a little bit more worthy of a foe to lose a character to. We've got a guy over here throwing stones, so apparently he's well aware of the fact that he does not live in a glass house, he lives in some kind of, like, and I don't know, some kind of basalt house or maybe a limestone house, I don't know. I can't get a good look at the grain through video game textures, I guess. I'm talking like William Shatner again. Anytime I'm collecting my thoughts, it's almost like when you think about how your computer loads data, my brain does the exact same thing. Like, I try to preload all the diatribes that I run into, but what ends up happening is sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain, at which point, once my mouth is completely and totally outrun my brain, which is a feat in and of itself because my mouth doesn't have feet, it's got plenty of teeth and a little bit of lip, but at the same time, it's got lots of bite too. I mean, I, you know, I am who I am. But in any case, it definitely has no feet, and so once it outruns it, I've got like this brief loading period where my brain starts making the sound that your disk drive makes, like that little like all those little noises that the disk platter makes. Oh, and you just got played chicken with. That guy tried to swing down on me like he was a hard ass, and he learned that his ass is very, very soft. And also quite penetrable by a sword-like object. I suppose not a sword-like object. Well, I guess a saber. If you wanted to really be pedantic, I guess a saber is a sword-like object. But I guess it still falls under the subcategory of swords anyway, so I don't know. I'm just talking out the corner of my mouth at this point, which is really, if I do my video logs, I have so much trouble not talking out of the corner of my mouth like some weird, like, San Diego punk rock kid. I don't know what it is. I suppose I hung out with too many San Diego punk rock kids. I bet that's where I got it from. But I noticed in my video that I always talk out of the corner of my mouth when I'm making video logs and LPs. I don't do it in real life. I only do it here. No idea. Out of curiosity, how cold is it right now in like Finland and Sweden and all those places? I know I have a reasonable following from Scandinavia, a place that I've always wanted to visit nonetheless. I've always wanted to go. I had a friend that got lucky. And he got to spend a bunch of time in Iceland over the last year, and I was just like, oh my god, man, I'm so jealous of you right now. I would love to go to Iceland, or I realize that that's a completely different island. So before somebody's like, that's an island, that has nothing to do with Scandinavia. I know, I didn't segue between my diatribes properly, but it's icy, and it has hot springs, and it appears to be cold, and it was discovered by Vikings, so you know. Or settled by Vikings, I guess, would be the more accurate nomer. Ooh, they got all kinds of food up here. Yeah, give me all your jerky. Now that our party has been pleasantly jerked, and nothing makes a party's morale go up like a nice jerking. I'm going to sell away all of this stuff that we've been looting and stealing from our foes. But as I was saying, I would absolutely... I've, I've always dreamed of being well-traveled. And given my circumstance, I doubt that it will ever happen. But we can all dream together. We can all be like, yeah, someday I'd like to touch various shores and say that I know stuff about stuff and meet interesting groups of people. And honestly, that's one of the nice things about LPing is it does allow me to kind of do that without having to go overseas. You think about the benefit of living in the computer age is that we can do that. Like, I can meet all of you from overseas and people, even from unique areas in the United States. Like, I've had some really strange conversations from people or with people from, like, Tennessee and whatnot. And in any case, it kind of cuts out the middleman. Like, I don't need to, like, fly to your country or anything just to talk with you and hang out. So there is the plus side there. But there are a lot of beautiful things out there that I hope to lay eyes on. Or at least lay eyes on a non-JPEG version of those said things by the time I pass from these shores to wherever the hell else it is we go after this. Or maybe if everything... I've always wondered, does it all just go black? And it's just like when you're sleeping, like you don't know you're... That's a crazy thought. Like, I had trouble sleeping for a while over this. And so, you might want to skip this next section if you tend to, like, hyper-focus on things. So I'm going to give you, like, two minutes... To just be like, nope, not going to listen to it. But it used to give me trouble sleeping when I was a kid. I used to think about that. How like you have that loss of self-awareness when you go to sleep at night. That used to terrify me with, when I was a kid. Because I'm somewhat of like, 
Well, I am. I'm very, very OCD about things. I'm a control freak, and I just cannot help it. And so one of the side things you notice about being a control freak is that, like, going to sleep becomes, like, this weird, terrifying, oh, I suppose, boogie monster or troll living under the bridge because, like, that's the opposite of control, being out of control. Like, you're falling asleep, and you don't have control of anything. You don't know what's going on, and honestly, you don't even know you exist anymore. And so I realize that's a weird thing to talk about here, but you know what? I'm going to talk about it anyways because it came to mind, and it fills chat space. And it took me a long time when I was younger to, like, get over that weird, irrational fear of sleeping. It's part of my insomnia. I used to stay up for, like, two and three days at a time. Whew. You guys, you get downright, it's weird, by day two. I always tell people that by, like, day, I would say around, like, the 48th hour, you just lose all semblance. Like, you have no emotional boundaries anymore. Like, everything just drives you into a rage or just makes you way too happy. Essentially, I would call it, like, an ultimate state of emotional feeling after you've been awake for that long because I guess it just kind of breaks down in your brain you start running off ketones or something I don't really know how it works but it's definitely unpleasant basically like the bridge that takes you from a sane state of mind to an insane of insane state of mind becomes much much shorter the less you sleep and so that was one of the fun things about being awake for like two and three days at a time now I sleep like a baby I don't know I think it's maybe partially some form of self-actualization now that I play video games and talk to myself on the internet I have no idea. It's a weird thing to self-actualize through, believe me. It's definitely one of those things that's like, really? You could self-actualize through that? But apparently you can. I am living proof. Now, what should we do right now? We need to go find ourselves the king. Where is Yeraglek at? A Yeraglek sounds like a throat noise that an alien would make. Be like, Yeraglek, Nick, bop. And that's like how they would speak. <laughs> Ooh, that one got me laughing. I don't even know anymore. Let me ask you, Kurias. I am Mad Dog McGrizzle. Tell me where your lord is, or I shall smash the mustache from your face. I will wipe the hairs from you with my elbow, sir. Uh, let's see. I need to know the location of King Yera Glizzle. He's up at Fedner. Fedner is around... Oh, it's way over here. Okay, good. Let's head on over to the Fedner. And once we're in Fedner... I need to level up some of these guys, too. We've got Rodok Tribesmen. We're going to turn them all into crossbowmen because I would love to have some of that lovely Rodok magic on my side. Some people call it OP. I call it a guy with a crossbow who also knows how to club people's skulls in. He's good at multitasking. He's got a range of abilities. He's a renaissance man of death. I'm going to go with Vigir Footsman right there. Footsman? <laughs> that sounds like they do their time giving some kind of foot massage. He's a footsman. What does he do for a living? Oh, he's a footsman. You know. Sits around rubbing feet for a living. His hands smell weird. They've got kind of like this Parmesan thing going on. When he enters the room, you're like, is somebody making spaghetti? Like, it's it's kind of gross, but at the same time, we just kind of like to have him around because he's a funny guy. Let's go talk to King Yeraglek, and we've taken care of that. We're now at one, which means we should be absolutely dandy to go buy ourselves some land in Veluca. Now, this land is going to be... Well, I mean, we're not going to be able to, like, rely on it. We're going to consider this to be kind of a provincial investment or maybe a poor investment, an investment that probably wasn't the wisest because we could go back to war with Vagirs at any moment. They are sharing a border with us on the Nordic side, so I think we'll probably lose access to some of these funds, but at the point where we're at, we've got so many different profitable enterprises that I'm kind of running out of places to plant these things, so I guess we'll just continue forward and put them everywhere, and when we're at war, we'll collect cash from them, and when we're not at war, we'll go ahead and just kind of write it off. There we go. So now they know us. Can we make tools? 210? No. Can we make... Ooh, minus 26. That's a pretty terrible... Wasn't that... This place might have been broke, as I recall. We can make... Ah, there it is. We can make an oil press. So we'll go ahead and do that. The oil press was not as economical as the iron foundry we put up, but it's something. It's a little bit of money that we're collecting each two-week period, so... Every little bit that you collect is something that you're not paying to troops, or at least it's allowing you to carry more troops along with you. It's a little bit of extra revenue to support those hungry mouths. Now then, we've hit up Veluca. We have something in Yalen. We don't have anything at Jelkala, so let's head down there. We'll get Jelkala next. And this may not be the most entertaining of episodes. I fully understand that this is probably not something you guys were looking forward to. Just me riding around in circles talking about just random bullshit. But in any case, I'm good at talking about random stuff, and I had to run all these errands anyways, and we were waiting for a war to get declared to begin with, so... Meh. Figured I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Why not? I love you guys, I love having you around, so it's kind of one of those share my couch cushion with me. Feel free to eat my fritos. I always say fritos when I, I always roll my R's when I say fritos, I don't know why. 
it's kind of an addiction. I grew up in an area that had lots of Spanish speakers, and so you start rolling your R's randomly. Just to show that you fit in, kind of. I wish to buy land. Now then, what do we want from you? You can make wine here, and our profits would be eight dinars a week. No thank you, that is chump change. What about ale from grain? We could make some beer. I do enjoy a nice amber ale, but unfortunately it's not profitable to do so. We can do leather for 133 a week, and that is a really expensive enterprise for something that just doesn't seem like it would turn around very well. A weird price on that one. Let's go ahead and take a look at linen. 70, no, no good. I'm trying to check the things I don't normally check. Minus 715, really? That is, that is something right there. They should just give you like a giant flag that says do not do this on the screen. It just screams at you. There is a problem with your course of action, sir. I saw that the other day. I was on a Wikipedia page and they were like, this Wikipedia page has problems. And I was like, what? Like, is it going to chase me down the street naked, holding a big old bit of woods, like whistling Dixie? Like, what's going to happen here? How unstable is this Wikipedia page? Kind of one of those weird, they chose weird words to say it. This Wikipedia page has problems. Kind of a condescending way to say it. Well, I guess the ale's gonna be the best thing to put in there. It seems like their economy is pretty bottomed out, so we'll spend a bare minimum amount of cash and put in a ale brewery. It works out for me. I mean, we could... I think ale gives you a bunch of morale, so during times of war, we could potentially come down here and grab some ale barrels and throw them in the back of the caravan, ride around a little bit, celebrate Skull. If you guys had been watching my Banner Saga playthrough, we did celebrate Skull, the Festival of Misery. And essentially what it was is that... Everybody sits around the campfire, and you try and tell the most miserable story you can remember. And so basically, it's a contest of who's the most miserable. And every time somebody one-ups you, you take a drink. And therefore, everybody gets nice and sauced, and you end up with a big old population of drunk people who are happy with their lot in life by bitching about all the things that get on their nerves. Now then, do I have anything in Charisse? I don't think I do. So we're going to ride around the streets here. The rough streets of Charisse. If you listen carefully, you can hear the sounds of crossbow bolts pinging off stone. Are you a oh, you are the guild master. Wow, I got you on the first try. Well then, I just clipped through that piece of wood right there. I have special powers. Don't question me. And my powers are very, very special. Now, here in Cherise, we could probably do something interesting. Like, we can do 454 a week if we do a velvet place. We could do 74 from iron, so that's not going to be economical, obviously. Check oil, 150. Okay, so... Oh, I didn't want that either. Ooh, they're paying pretty well. And Bovern, yeah, we'll do that and we'll bring back the girl. They want us to answer a ransom, and the ransom is over a thousand dinars. I've never seen one that big before. Let's go... <laughs> Giggity. Now then, we will do a weavery and die horse. <laughs> I lost my train of thought right there. Like when your mind falls into the gutter, when it makes that initial bounce, like it hits the ground, it bounces, and then sometimes if you get really unlucky, it'll hit like the bottom part of the L of the gutter, it'll bounce, and then it'll hit the upward leg of the L of the gutter, and you'll get like a double whammy, and when that happens, I just end up with kind of a thought process, could, and just a little bit of a thought process concussion, I guess. Let's find Bovren. I, I don't even know where Bovren's at. I can't remember the name of all these towns at this point. I have trouble remembering simple things like wash your hands after... You know, you use the facilities, so I... When it comes to important things... I'm just kidding. God. What could be more important than eliminating germs? You know that every time you wash germs off your hands with antibacterial soap, you're creating super germs. Germs that will one day come along and annihilate us all. I don't know, I sound like a crazy tin hat conspiracy theorist at this point. But I, I'm willing to bet that there's probably some truth to what I've said. Let's beat up these bandits because we got a couple men. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. No, I clicked the wrong thing. No. No. And you know what's really sad? If I beat them up, I don't get the money back. Balls. Absolute balls. Well, my stupidity seems to have created a blockade for my financial well-being, and I guess we'll just go back to where we came from with our pockets empty. Normally what I'd like to do is tell them to piss off and keep the money for myself, but I clicked the wrong thing because, I don't know, my finger twitched or something. Because reasons. Don't question it. It's fine. My name is Splattercat. I think we're going to break off the episode here. I'll see you guys in the next... Oh, they're sieging right now. Well, maybe I can ride through the siege lines. Yeah? Oh, okay. There it is. Let's go back to the Guildmaster. Get ourselves a little bit of friendly... God, that's sad. The only reason we did that was for a little bit of money, and I went and messed it up. Just kind of earnest style. Oh, well.
sighing at myself. Let me get a little bit of XP. That counts. I do have guys to upgrade. I'll do it in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mount and Blade Vorband. In the next episode, we'll probably continue riding around, see if we can't get ourselves squared away with some high-tier troops, get ready for the next war, because you never know when it's coming. And next time, I'm willing to bet it's probably going to be with Vagirs. You don't seem to go to war with the same guys over and over again. Like, you don't seem to hit one guy, declare peace, and hit that guy again. They seem to ping-pong back and forth between factions that have drawn their ire at any given moment. Moment, so we'll keep an eye out for it an ear to the ground what have you i'll see you guys next time hi do everybody